Okay, we're back here for the sixth video um, lecture for the first week of AR 105. Um, just real quick going through the principles of design. These are secondary to the elements of art and really it's about how the elements of art are put together um, into the framework of the piece. And what we have here, balance, focal point, scale or proportion, repetition, rhythm, um, these can be talked about too. They're, I don't feel like they're as important, but sometimes your artwork really needs to be described in these ways. And it's always available beyond text, I'm sorry, beyond line, color, texture, form, shape. Um, those are the biggies, but beyond those, you can talk about these um, if you want. Um, I'd love for you to, on every piece, go into it because you should be able to. Um, again, they're just not as important, but balance here. Um, this Franz Hall's piece, you've got all these guys everywhere, but it's balanced. One side does not overwhelm the other. Okay, there's always some balancing act and that makes this very, very stable. It's unmoving. Um, these are very upright citizens, um, so you, they're not causing problems. It's very staid. It's very calm. Okay. Um, another thing is the focal point. What is the focal point within a piece? Um, within this, some people might see the tree. Probably not, since it blends into the background. Maybe the three women here on the left. It's a larger area. That might be the focal point for you. Um, but really, I would say that the focal point is a single woman back here with her back towards us. It looks like she's moving. She's separate from the other three. If you look at this tree, it's sort of makes a frame around her. Um, the gravel of this path leads into the dress. There's a lot of contrast between her and the background. And I believe that this just screams, look at me. That is what the eye is pulled to versus the women over here. Okay, so focal point. Now, sometimes the focal point is a little bit hard. This Veronese piece very much does not have a focal point. Unless you look at the very middle of the piece, divided on a vertical and divided on a horizontal, and right below that is Christ in the middle here. Somewhat of a halo there. But between all of these dozens of people, he doesn't really stick out. Okay, So sometimes there's almost a false focal point that's not as important. And sometimes that's used as a device, as in this one, that Christ is human. He blends in with the people. Scale and proportion. Sometimes an artwork is very, very huge compared to a normal human. Um, this is the recreation of the Parthenon uh, that's in Nashville, Tennessee. And we have about a six foot tall artist here up against a 60 foot statue. Okay, um, It's huge. And even you can see another person working on it right back here. Okay. And then later on in this process, the scaffolding was put on and they're actually applying uh, gold leaf to the same sculpture. And you can see a person who's between five, five and six feet tall up against the head and the torso of this huge sculpture. So this is a huge scale um, model of a human being with huge proportions, okay? Um, and then when you talk about repetition and rhythm, 
this small temple in Rome has repetition in that it has multiple, multiple columns all the way around it. It's a circular temple and the columns go all the way around. So it's this repetition of not just the, the columns themselves, but the fluting, these cuts into the side, the grooves on the side accentuate that. Okay, So those are some of the principles of design that you can use to describe your artwork. Um, and next we're actually going to go in and talking to talk about critical analysis. <clears throat> how to look at artwork and how to communicate the artwork. Okay. This is the text on the information on the assignment sheet. And what we have here are four different areas. And these are different things that you are to do. And I'm just going to go over them really quickly here. And then I'm actually going to do a very, very short verbal analysis of a piece of artwork. So here, describe. Um, you're to look at the details of the artwork, um, the date, the artist, the media. Um, if you look in your book, with every piece of artwork, there is information about it. Um, in the early part of the book, there won't be an artist because we don't know who did that cave painting. Um, but we do know Van Gogh. Okay? So you need to give that information. That's to allow your reader to know exactly which piece you're talking about. And then after that, describe the artwork. Describe what's going on in the background, the foreground, left, right, um, what's down the middle. Um, you can talk a little bit about color, but I would refrain and just talk about the things. What are the facts about it? And the most important thing about this is not making any judgment. Okay? Do not jump the gun and make any judgments about your artwork at this point. That will come later, okay? Um, the second thing is to analyze. To me, this is the most important thing about it. This is the most important section um, because you're looking at the artwork and you're describing the elements of art and how they're used. How is line used? And describe the lines. How is texture used? And describe the texture, okay? Be very descriptive in that, okay? And the most important things are here, line, color, shape, form, texture. Then after that, it would be great if you went on to discuss focal point, symmetry, and some of the others. Always using those dis descriptive words. And again, do not make any judgments. This is all about the facts at this point. This is to get you into the artwork and to understand it better without making any snap I love it, I hate it, sort of decisions at that time. Um, what you're trying to do with describe and analyze is to build an image in your reader's mind, in their imagination of what this artwork looks like. Maybe they have never seen a piece that you're describing but you describe it with enough detail that you can build up that image in their mind about it, okay? I once had a student on campus in an art appreciation class who was blind, and it really stretched my teaching, and it made me understand critical analysis better because as I would show slides, obviously she could not see it. But what I did was make audio recordings and um, typed up um, descriptions for her that her devices would translate into Braille. And then she'd be able to see it, quote unquote. Okay. 
Now, after doing description, after doing analysis, then interpret. This is where you get to look at it and say, what's going on here? What's the story? Um, and that's your story, not what the artist wanted. This is your story. How do you interpret it? Okay. Um, it could be very obvious. Um, it might not be obvious. But what is going on? Okay. Um, again, that's in paragraph form. And then the, the last part is finally you get to judge. So is this a good piece of artwork? Um, do you like it? Do you not like it? Why don't you like it? Why do you like it? What you need to do is now make your personal judgment. Is this piece of artwork going to stand the test of time? Will people 100 years from now appreciate it? Why or why not? Okay, so describe, analyze, interpret, judge. And I'm very quickly going to talk about this piece, which is Impression Sunrise by Claude Monet. Um, it's an oil on canvas made in 1873, 1872. Um, 72 is what's on the canvas. Um, so I'm going to describe it. What I um, see here is a seaport at sunrise or sunset. Um, the sky is the top third, and then there seems to be a horizon line running all the way across the rectangle um, in blue. And then that leads down to about halfway, and then the whole bottom half is what looks like a seascape in that bay. Okay. Um, in that blue area on the horizon, there are tall masted ships um, in dock. There are what appear to be factories with um, smoke rising up from smokestacks. And that those are on the left. On the right, just above the horizon, near the middle, is an orange disc representing the sun. Um, also on the left in this blue horizontal line, horizon line, is what looks like maybe cranes um, in a dark blue um, that they might be, um, well, I'm just describing it then. Okay. Then in the foreground on this water area, one of the main things is this vertical column of striated lines that represent the um, reflections of the sun in a very calm water area, but they're still rippled. And then there are three small boats with people in them. The front one is about a quarter of the way up in the very middle um, that's made out of black. And then moving diagonally to the upper left, there's another smaller boat um, back in space. And then there's another one in blue. So there's a repetition being built up. Okay, analyze. Um, we've got blue lines. We've got thick blue lines. We've got a sky made of orange with broad sweeping lines of the brush. Down below in the water, the water's made up of sweeping broad strokes of light blue, but then dark blue and black are used to represent the ripples. Color, there's orange in the top, there's blue in the very middle, that's a vibrant blue or a deep blue depending, and then there are light blue areas below. Um, my interpretation, this is a calm day out on the um, bay, people are going to work, um, and then um, my judgment, I like it. Um, it's serene. It reminds me of early days out at the lake. Um, will people love it years from now? I think so. And then we'll end this segment and we'll move on actually to get into our chapters.